Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, let's give another couple more minutes. Uh, we'll start off in three minutes, if you don't mind. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Sayan and I'm from Five Trend. Um, so today I'll be taking you through together with the Sears team um, on, on you know transforming your business insights with powerful data insights. Um, feel free to you know ask any questions you guys have. Um, since you know the audience um, is quite small, uh, we can take it first. Um, so let's just kind of uh, think kick off what we'll be covering off in the session today. Um, we'll be giving you a five trend overview um, that I'll be running and then Surat will be covering on how what Sears does and how you know together you can unlock the modern data stack. Um, and then we will go into a Q&A session if you guys have any questions on what Sears or five trend does. Um, feel free to you know stop us or um, you know drop any questions in the in the chat box. Um, we will be happy to answer. So um, what is five trend? And you know, you know, let's let's kind of take a step back and understand, uh, you know, uh, the data journey of a lot of analysts out there. So um, you know, the modern data stack or what people are trying to implement, uh, where they're trying to bring multiple different data sources into the data warehouse, um, and then try to you know um, get some form of analytical insights across. Uh, it seems to be the go-to picture and the team um, these days, but we notice a lot of things uh, in the market when this is happening. Um, so 52% of companies have multiple different data sources that are lying around, for example, different technologies like Salesforce, HubSpot, um, Zendesk, uh, Postgres servers, all of that running applications or even supporting the business from different needs. Um, and you know, data analysts and data engineers, they spend a lot of the time building these scripts. I think almost 90% of the time, um, you know, creating and maintaining this data integration needs that they have. Um, so all of these is kind of, you know, maintained in an open source manner or it's maintained by a small team. Um, and what, what, what we notice is that pipelines then start becoming unreliable or, you know, it, it requires a lot of manual intervention to, to keep it up, up and running. Um, 
And one of the biggest thing when you're hiring a data analyst is to get business insights. Um, we noticed that you know 68% of them actually spend a lot of the time, um, you know, and, and a lot of the time doing these activities where they can actually be using their time to do profit-driven ideas, uh, building dashboards for the business, um, you know, deep diving into their data sources so they can understand, you know, where which which parts and businesses from a revenue risk they can mitigate and you know increase their sales. So Five Trend um, revolutionized this in 2013. We came up with a couple of connectors, and then we saw there was a big market for this. Um, but the real problem on what we do is to help centralize data. So we help you move data sources uh, natively from your Stripe, GitHub, Oracle servers, NetSuite. Um, and that this is what will be a continuous sync across into um, you know, your data warehouse engine like BigQuery. And then your team can then start looking into building um, you know, an analytical ready schema um, concentrate a lot on transformation and then really concentrate on the, the more profit driven ideas as I was mentioning earlier. So building out data products like embedded analytics for your customers or even supplying these data to your operational system through a reverse ETL method or even you know from a data AI ML perspective which Surat will cover more into later like you can do with BigQuery. And I think the most common use case you see is BI, um, you know, unlocking those insights from your business so ETL in general is a never ending task. And um, another, another approach we see a lot of businesses take uh, is you know, the ETL approach where you actually identify your data sources and then you scope it out with your business users and then you define those data models you need and then build that ETL layer that you require and then you, you know, generate that insights. The process typically takes, you know, in, in a very small cloud native organization, maybe a couple of weeks, but in a big um, organization, it may take uh, quite a few weeks to get done or months. And this one thing we notice is that, you know, reports then or, or data requests then becomes out of date. Your business stakeholder says, oh, something has changed from a requirement perspective. Can you go and make some changes to the data model? And then you go back into this never ending cycle of, you know, um, making changes and, and making sure the report is up to date for your business stakeholder. So that really loses a lot of relevancy um, really quickly. Be Below, I'm just showing you a couple of ways and you know legacy tools that that have have been used in the market um, to do data mapping, um, you know, build transformations and etc. Um, it's it's very interesting to see how user friendly this is because if example one of your analysts is out of out of out of the day, can the rest of the team um, go in and edit this model so that your business stakeholders can be happy? And a lot of these softwares they tend to be very capex heavy and they lose their relevancy really quickly also. So it's really a question about the never ending cycle of engine of, of ETL and how that, that fits into your, your, your motion and you know, how user friendly this is from a, from a data analyst point of view. So how Fivetrain takes it to a different approach, we take an ELT model. Um, what typically is happening within a Fivetrain workflow is when you have a data source to con connect to, for example, a Salesforce data source, um, what typically happens is that you plug, it's a plug and play tool. You authenticate into the source. Fivetrend handles everything else from scheduling the batch queries, um, you know, from even forming the, the, the data schema, normalization of the data, and we will automatically start creating that schema down end in your destination for you. And this is a one time process. And once you set it up, um, the, his, the, the, the historical thing is done and a continuous upstream of data is being done. So from a five trend perspective, it's like this. It's all a managed workflow. Customer or user logs in into the platform, connects, and that's all they have to worry about. Data starts flowing into BigQuery very naturally. So what really makes us different? Um, you can see different applications, databases, even event files, um, you know, from softwares like Amplitude, or even your, your, your file, file type of data you know, from cloud to cloud type of migration. You're trying to move data from S3 to BigQuery or even FTP to BigQuery. All of that can be done from a very analysis ready schema. So Fivetrain will then automatically pick up the data updates as I was mentioning. And we work in a very uh, micro batch architecture. So that means, you know, your, your source system's performance will not be affected um, by Fivetrain connecting into it. 
um, we are working on a micro batch architecture to pull data out from your log files or typically from a replication strategy. So it also works in a very automatic recovery. For example, if one of the at one point there's a failure or you know you have you have um, shut out the pipe, um, you have turned off the data pipeline. Once you turn it on, Fivetrain will continue where it left off from. So it's a very powerful core platform. It's totally on the cloud. You do not need to install anything. You do not need to have any infrastructure needed. Fivetrain handles everything for you. On top of that, it's totally cloud native. So we are always ahead to always maintain those connectors. For example, if you have you know, Facebook connectors or Instagram connectors, they're notoriously very famous for you know, being out of date or API releases that will affect it um, you know, on a quarter by quarter basis. Fivetrain, um, engineering team is always ahead of it. And that's one of the value that we bring to the table. So automatic data updates, as I was mentioning, any data that's coming in, um, we will incrementally push the data down to a five minute frequency, update any of the data sources, or even any deletions are captured from a soft delete perspective. So your BigQuery or your data warehouse is always up to date with the, from your data sources that you're bringing across. Same thing, this is, I think, one of the biggest value. Um, typically, when you see a lot of um, um, automatic schema drifting happening, when there's new column of addition or removal of column, Python scripts or even your scripts you're writing typically tend to start failing because there's a new um, object being added or removed. Fivetrain has inbuilt AI capabilities in that perspective to copy that that object across to the destination so that your pipeline is resilient and is still up. So you, so you do not need to worry about any removal or change in the source system um, from an upset perspective or even from a schema drip perspective. All of that is captured automatically. So a couple of customer stories I probably want to go into detail. It's, um, we had this customer called Football Index where they were using um, Google BigQuery as the engine. So they connected immediately into Aurora SQL, which they were running on their servers. Um, they had Facebook insights where they wanted to look into CPQ, CPM type of spend for marketing analytics, they had mixed panel, MongoDB, JSON data coming in, and even Twitter ads. So um, the CTO thing there mentioned that you know they reduced their development time um, by 10 to 20 percent and and all of that was just done in a couple of clicks. To set up all of these SaaS base and database connectors takes you less than a day. In in when I, in my previous life when I was a data engineer, um, you typically see a huge amount of time, at least a two to three month uh, period just to build all of these connectors up, get it running and orchestrating the data across. So Fivetrain handles all of that directly. Another customer, Chubbies, um, same, same different use cases. You have uh, database connectors, SQL servers, file, file type of data from FTP, Postgres, multiple different um, instances where they were bringing data from different cloud um, platforms where they're running their project on Exior. Um, to bring data into BigQuery for analysis. So it was, it's, it's really good to have it all in one single platform that you can analyze and make sure what's happening. And you really save tons of engineering resources because for each of these connectors, it takes approximately 20 to 30 hours a week to maintain. So having a very lean team um, and making, making them able to concentrate on more um, AI-driven stuff um, tends to be a very, very good um, play for, for the data engineering view. Um, just a quick insight and a, a plug. Uh, we have 2,000 customers. Here are some of our logos of the customers that we are supporting. And we are GCP's premier partner of the year for 2020. Um, and we, we work with quite a lot of different data sources, I think up to 175, and it, it's always growing. So I'll just hand it off to um, Suraj now to kind of talk to you about how, you know, you bring this data into BigQuery, what can you do with it and how Sears can actually help you, um, you know, take this data to the next level. Thank you, Sian, for showing how instrumental Fivetran is in ETL. So uh, let's begin. So I'm Suraj. I work with Sears as cloud sales consultant. So I'll just brief about what Sears does. So Sears is a modern age technology consulting firm. We are into cloud, data engineering, ML, AI, infra modernization, big data of the world. So just giving a brief about what Sears is and what we are into. We do infra assessments. We build the future state work transformations. We manage your cloud. We are Google top three partners uh, in globally. 
and we are also a AWS consulting firm. So coming to the flow where Sian left, uh, can you move to the next slide, please? Yeah. So let's discuss about machine learning pipeline. So once your data is in a particular data warehouse, for example, BigQuery or be it on-prem or any other data warehouse. So what clients are moving towards or what they are investing in lot is ML or AI. So the basic pipeline that machine learning follows is data collection, data processing, model selection, model training, and evaluation. So let's just talk about a brief about all these steps. So data collection is basically when your data is collected in data warehouse, it could be batch data, or it could be a streaming data. It could be coming in batches at night times, or it could be, uh, you know, continuous flow of data coming from IOT devices or any other devices like traffic signals or hospital uh, uh, instruments or any type of streaming data. So the most important step when we consider machine learning, that would be data processing. So some sort of transformation would already be already been done when you are in the ETL stage of your data, but there are a lot of steps that have to be, you know, your data should be clean if you want to perform a machine learning uh, model on it. So let's talk about some of the things here. So variable types, what does that mean? So if a client has a data set, there are numerous variables that client can have in a data set and those can be you know, numerical value or categorical values. What do I mean by categorical values? It could be in categories, like there could be a variable which is showing gender of a particular client, male or female or anything. So these categorical variables are not accepted by the model, the machine learning model. So they have to be converted into numerical values. And these type of detailed discussions are done by our data scientists in CS, and we we have a detailed discussion on how to go about encoding these variables, understanding how to handle the missing data in the data you have, because just going and filling the data for which is missing would cause a lot of problems on the model. So there are a lot of methods, a lot of automation that we do in our in CS for these type of uh, you know these type of prompt statements. There is also categorical variable imputation, which is same as missing data imputation, but it's just for categorical variables. The one of the most important step in data processing is also outlier handling. We identify which are the, uh, you know, points in your data which are being outliered because so that they don't uh, create a problem in your model. And the other would be feature scaling. So next step in machine learning is going with model selection. So we have to first specify whether we are going with a classif classification problem statement or regression problem statement. So it could be classification problem statement in machine learning is just classifying with respect to categorical variables. For example, if you have 10 types of product, you just want to, you, know, you just want your model to classify what type of product is this. So product one, product two, product three, that's a classification problem statement and regression problem statement is predicting continuous variables, mostly numerical values. If you want to predict your sales numbers, so that is a regression problem statement. You're predicting a numerical value. So, and the most important step in model selection is EDA, which is exploratory data analysis. You have to perform a lot of visualization on your data and in CS, we have a different altogether team who performs a visualization process. Uh, to on the data set to give you more insights and what what points you could be missing on on your data and then after doing a lot of eda on your data set the next step would be model training you don't train your model on the whole data set in fact you split it into two parts for example you train your data set you train your model on 80 to 70 percent of the data set so that it learns from that 80 to 70 percent of data and then you test on the remaining 20 to 30 percent of data to get what results are you actually getting is the model performing good or not and to evaluate these we have different metrics that we follow in machine learning it could be accuracy precision recall and these metrics are different for regression and classification problems next slide please so let's discuss an interesting case study that we did with tata steel 
so the problem that tata steel was facing was a visual ins- inspection of metal scrap that they have so there is a lot of metal scrap created these days and there are visual inspectors who identify that this is a zinc metal or aluminum or any other type of metal which creates a lot of opex cost increase and this is actually not an accurate way to save your cost on metal detection or metal scrap detection so we with the tata steel or client build a rnn architecture which is in neural networks to identify different types of scraps metal and this is solely done by dif- uh, taking in different images of the metals and then our model predicts what type of metal scrap would it be and on what, like and it gives a percentage value a strong value if, if a percentage value close to 100% or 90% for a particular metal scrap and then the process uh, takes further how to scrap it so this actually reduces your opex cost and also the error of visual inspection next slide please so one more detailed uh, interesting concept that we have uh, most of you would have heard about amazon uh, retail outlets right so what actually amazon retail outlet does they they are actually working on it right now but it's a very interesting concept which comes in so they have retail outlets in many in many places in us so you don't have you there is no billing counter in those outlets so you have a card with you you top up the card with uh, amount of money that you want to shop that grocery store you just pick the items from those grocery store and you just leave you just don't pay so the items that you pick have a uh, have a iqr card and that is that amount is being deducted from the card you have from the amazon card you have that you topped up so it's a smart uh, uh delivery uh, smart grocery store concept so uh, as on similar lines what we do we in cios we develop these kind of products we are not only service consulting company but also trying to develop these type of products with us and for our client uh, with google cloud also what we did we uh, for our client we enabled a chatbot in a grocery store so what does it do if i am sitting at home i want to order groceries from a certain grocery store a specific grocery store for uh, this example so i can order any type of grocery by actually saying the name of the items that i want it would automatically convert it into text and those are automatically paid f- uh, by connecting via payment gateway so this actually decreases the time for a grocery store uh, the time cycle that you have for a customer as well and it's a very simple and intuitive design that you have to pick up from the grocery store so we are into developing all these solutions as well next slide please so most uh, one of the most interesting concept that google also has recently launched is bigquery ml so what does bigquery ml does so bigquery is a data warehouse as sand pointed out and we can uh, write sql queries inside bigquery to just do some uh, basic analysis but google has gone one step ahead and we as seers are also doing with our clients we implement uh, machine learning basic machine learning with the he- with help of sql so most of you would have heard that machine learning can only be done with help of python but that's not true in case of bigquery you can do machine learning inside a data warehouse which is bigquery next slide please so you can create all the steps that you have for machine learning like model creation evaluating your model predicting model all these can be done in bigquery itself so once for example fivetran have moved the data seamlessly into bigquery with the help of their automated etl so now if you want to run a ml on it you can and you don't want to go ahead and use python and you have lot of sql developers they can directly write a sql statement and do machine learning on it so this really shows how huge companies are giving interest to ml and ai by also developing these type of things in different languages not restricting it to python next slide please so we'll show some data showcases here yeah so one of the interesting case study that i would like to discuss is cinemas that we have pvr cinemas in india right so anyone would like to uh, tell how cinemas business is going down compared to ott right now or they can bounce back anyone
Okay, no problem. So we see that uh, OTT platforms has re really given tough competition to uh, PVR and how and how this conversation relates to MLS. You would see that Netflix, Amazon Prime, or any of these things like OTT platform has a lot of recommendation system in it. They have a lot of ML going on behind. They judge on what you see, what you browse, and they come up with the same recommendations for you. But how cinemas like these can adopt ML or AI and come up with the same solution. They cannot give recommendations to us, right? But they have a lot of data. When you book a ticket through PVR cinemas or you just go out to PVR cinemas and order in, in your interval, in your interval during a movie, you order some food. So the, there, is, there is a lot of data with them. And what, uh, what uh, as a consulting partner for them, we have thought they, we can uh, get this data in a centralized system, uh, analyze it and for example, we can launch a marketing campaign. So we know what type of person is, what type, what one person is watching a movie. For example, X persons come and watches a movie A. So we create a model, judge what a person is watching and throw a marketing campaign to that cell phone that you would be interested to watch this movie because it's similar with your favorite popcorn. So that is how cinemas would also be using ML and AI into their system to give tough competition to OTT platforms. So this is done by real-time analytics, real-time ETL, structured data, unstructured data. And once the data is there in a data warehouse, we just go ahead and analyze all data and create campaigns so that they can increase their business. Next slide, please. So this is just an example of how we also come into visualization after ML or before ML pre steps, how we visualize data, how we build dashboards with from uh, one of our e-commerce retailer. And this clearly shows that you can take informed decisions for your company through consulting through CEOs. Next slide, please. Yeah, this is just one more example, which comes in. So a bit about Sears, as I said, we are uh, Google Cloud top three global partners globally. We are AWS con advanced consulting partners. We have many customers, more than 2000 customers using with us. And we are not only into cloud, we are into G Suite, G Maps, software engineering, infrastructure modernization, and whatnot for all the big data of the world as well. So I would like to end here. And if any questions regarding ML, I I'm happy to take. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kalyani here. Yeah, hi. Hi. You know, the question is for both, actually. Uh, it's a startup at this point of time. And uh, it's a fashion tech uh, B2B SaaS, right? And we, want, we will be uh, integrating a lot of APIs, like Pinterest, Instagram, and a few more. So first, I really want to understand how, uh, you know, uh, the first company that presented can integrate the data for us. Have you ever done, have you done any fashion brands or for any creative brands? That's first the question is. And if you have worked, what would be the method, okay, that you would propose? And the second is for you uh, 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 is that uh, um, I understand that you will be putting the ML uh, and AI algorithm, algorithms, but you would be needing the structured data. So who is creating that for you? Will the first company provide that? Yeah. Hi, Kalani. Nice to meet you. Um, Hi. So, uh, marketing analytics and marketing operations use case is uh, bread and butter for us. We work with quite a few different um, fashion startups and also companies that are you know, in the PR agencies. So what Five Trend does is we will connect to your Pinterest ads, Instagram ads, Facebook ads, and a whole other suite of ad data or SaaS applications. We will pull that schema out for you and land yeah. it in a analysis ready format that you can consume in BigQuery. So you can use it for um, AI ML work, or you can even use it for, you know, CPQ, CPM type of analysis directly from, um, you know, BI softwares like Tableau and Luca for you to leverage on. 
So it's a, it's a very useful use case. I'm happy to share with you more um, on customer yes. stories uh, at a later stage, perhaps. Yes, because uh, because one of my biggest uh, uh, you know growth would be if we can give the right trends to designers. Right, and also uh, uh, with this, uh, with search, we can actually make it specific. We can personalize it to a particular designer. Get right, I mean? right, right. So, uh, so that's where I'm thinking that how can we get the data which is structured and then personalize personalize it uh, with the with your with search. You get it? Yeah. Sure, sure, Galan. So, uh, uh, like what we have also seen a trend in the fashion industry that they are only not restricted to structured data, but mostly unstructured images of clothing. The, the and 90, yeah. 95 to 99 percent, it would be videos right. or pictures. Absolutely. And, and we will be putting uh, a lot of information, uh, we will be using computer vision. Yeah, basically. And then uh, uh, mainly we want to, you know, look at trends from Milan, Paris, Vogue, runways and things like that. So that is another. So will that be, uh, will I be able to get those uh, structured data by using your company? Sure, absolutely. Right. So do I have to book a meeting with you both separately? How to go about it? Yeah. Hi, uh, hi Kalyani. Uh, yeah, I am a cloud consultant at Sears, and I'll let you help with uh, coordination with both Fitran and Sears uh, right after the this meeting. I'll connect with you personally. All right, all right. Do you, do you need to? Do, should I send you my email ID, or you have it? I I'll connect with you. No problem. I have okay. email ID. Perfect, perfect. That'll be great. Thank you so much. I'm I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I'm Nagraj in this side. Hi, sir. How are you? Fine. I'm 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 an innovator of a machine. Okay. I'm 73 years age yet. <laughs> okay, sir. And uh, I have been a hands-on engineer from my 15th year onwards. That that's nice to hear, sir. That's great. I, I'm electrical and mechanical engineer. Okay. And reasonably well, well informed about physics. Okay, sir. And then and that is why. I have, I have fabricated the uh, means. Uh, uh, even Prime Minister's office, they asked me, asked somebody to, from IIT Madras to help me. I, but I, I, could not, I could not get any help from many uh, centers of excellences. Okay. So, uh, my friend told me, who has seen me at the work, he said, God has built you to do it yourself. So I have. Uh, fabricated 90% of my prototype machine. Okay. Had I had the CAD analysis uh, help, I would not have wasted a lot of energy, time, money, everything. Um, sir, uh, perfectly uh, fine. I'll connect with you after the call and uh, we can take, take that forward and any kind of help from Sears uh, in any kind of consulting pro consulting or problem solving thing, we'll help you with that. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. I'll, I'll connect with you after the call. Yeah. Definitely, sir. Thank you so much for uh, joining me. I, I would like to have CAD analysis help, preferably in Madras. Uh, that is not a problem for us. Uh, we'll have to go through the portfolio and I'll give you all the details, whatever I have, and I'll connect with you personally. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there any other questions for Sears in Vitran? Uh, uh, hi, Sia. Yeah, Pranav. Yeah, this this is Pranav this side. Yeah. I have a question for Suraj, and this is regarding ML. Sure. So, sure. as we all know, that ML is a long-term transformative in investment, and it can probably take years to you know reap the benefits or the ROI. So my question is, what can be the metrics to measure the business impact of ML? Or if Suraj, you can tell some use cases where ML is heavily used in businesses. Right. So uh, this is one of the uh, top questions of all the business people uh, right around here also. So one solution that is coming up is auto ML for this to reduce the uh, to reduce the timeline and to keep a check on the return on investment as well. 
so as i told you the ml pipeline it has many steps and that consumes a lot of time and the investment on all these steps is a lot so if like so from google also we have uh, a lot of pre built models and in our company as well we have a lot of pre built models where we automate the system the processes in between for example if you are going for a regression problem we automate the whole problem statement to, uh, from various steps for example data pre processing and all and then we reduce the investment on these steps on basic steps so that first when the investment return on investment is reduced so that you can have less investment on your project and secondly if you are running some campaign over it or you are doing it for any other purpose you have to track the results over time so yes as you said correctly this wouldn't be like within 6 months you are getting results within 6 months you are you are draining money on ml that's absolutely right but seeing long term perspective with the help with help of ml ops uh, machine learning operations and auto ml return on investments can be seen in early stages Okay. Suraj, I have one question. Mm -hmm. I have one question from my side. Uh, who is supporting you with the uh, the labeled data set? Sorry, can you repeat? Who is supporting your company uh, for the labeled clean data set? Uh, Ma'am, we have our own uh, specific data scientists who are working on this, and we also work with Google team on specific projects where they have involvement. so we directly work with google amazon or any other cloud partner if the project is on cloud and mm -hmm. we our by sales also work on other projects and we have a specified team for ai for ml for visualization and fiber five fran you... yes we have we work with five fran as well or uh, to automate the etl process using mm -hmm. their uh, tool all right and if there's a, it's a very specific question Um, it's okay if you don't have the answer. You guys have anything for fabrics? A, a label data set for fabrics? Uh, yes, uh, we would have it because uh, there are many case studies that we are working across. So, because label data set, we have many case studies. So, yes, we would have something on it. I guess Amrita would give you some pointers on that when she connects with you. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. I also have a question for both the panelists here, and thank you so much for such an insight insightful session. Uh, so the question is uh, is on ML again. Uh, so I understood that whenever, so I I understood that whenever a company undertakes any kind of ML project, there are definitely multiple steps in a project's journey, as we know. For example, understanding the business, understanding the data, preparing, modeling. So, um, what according to you is the most important step in any ML project? And you can also take example from any of the previous projects that ha you have undertaken uh, in Sears or uh, whenever in your past. So, I would like to ask this question from both of you. Right. Sir, so, you want to go first. So you go first from the ML portion, or handle the ELP part after. Okay, it. okay. So uh, one case study which I showed for Tata Steel. So one of the most important step for any client would be having the right data. For example, for Tata Steel to detect right amount of uh, to detect or to differentiate between diff different metals, we have to have a right set of images, right set of unstructured data because images are unstructured, and if the data is precise or and we give lot of images to the model so that it can predict it in the right way so according to me one of the most or according to us one of the most important step would be having the right data at first place and cleaning it the processing part so 60% time would go in the processing part that okay. is the most important step okay. yeah uh, understood and Starting on on where Suraj left off, yes. Yeah, so bringing the data in, getting the data correct, we see a lot of customers, uh, you know, trying to bring in or trying to do AI or ML, and they have a goal, um, but then we end up, you know, working with them backwards to actually see where their data silos sit. You know, are they looking into finance data? They they need to overlap that with with other data sources. Um, then you know, we have to map and actually understand. Oh, is the customer pulling data from NetSuite? 
And then do they have inventory system in Oracle, for example, all on the on-prem server? So unlocking those data silos within the business is where Fivetrend really plays a very important role. Um, if you have data on-prem or even from a different cloud, and you're trying to bring it into um, BigQuery, for example, to do that form of analysis, um, getting the data sets right and making sure the data sets are cleaned, um, as, as Suraj mentioned, it's where Fivetrend plays really an important role. And then also on top of that, always hydrating the data, whether it's down to a five minutes or 15 minutes frequency, or even some use cases take you know, a, a daily frequency, getting the data hydrated so that the AI ML model can continue to read it. Okay. Great. Can I have a question again, Sian? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, there is one thing that I want to know. You know, uh, with designers, we, you know, the, the project is live sometimes for two weeks. It can go up to six months, right? Mm -hmm. So say a particular file or something. I'm talking about data management now. Mm -hmm. So uh, how you can actually, op how you can help us optimize the data space or the server space where we can keep the, the, the active files in front and put the rest in 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 another containers so that it can be pulled out immediately if they need from archives do you do that you do you do that or it's a so let me, let me let me maybe take a step back and explain how five trend works so for example if you have a, a file bucket or you know an mm. instance where you have a bunch of csv files or or pdf mm. files for for read what five trend yeah. typically does is that we connect and we bring across, for example, you have 10 files historically, we'll bring that 10, 10 files across um, for free. And then we will continue to query your, mm -hmm. your file bucket on a you know, 15, 20 minute frequency to bring mm -hmm. in the new files um, that have been landed there. So then in that case, um, the CS team, the, the, the BQ engine is always forever um, updated with the latest files for you to, uh, for you to do your analysis on. So that's how mm -hmm. Fivetrend works from a historical and an incremental sync perspective. And this works not only just for um, your, your file functions, it works for Facebook ads, for Instagram ads, all your SaaS applications, your database, your SQL servers. Um, great, that's great. the functional um, use case itself. Got that. Thank you. Perfect. Um, if there's no questions from our side or anyone else, uh, we can, I think, wrap this up. Uh, so I think from our end, please reach out. I think Amrita will reach out to anyone who is interested to find out more. We can definitely have uh, a meeting to understand more about your use case and, and you know, tell us whether, and we have a, have a better conversation whether you can do it or we can do it from, from a perspective. I have one quick question. I'm uh, Akash. Uh, yep. Go ahead, Akash. Yeah, I need to know uh, how far we are connected with SAP, you know, how, what is the level of connectivity with various SAP products? Yes. Be it uh, S4 HANA, be it R3, uh, and are we certified, you know, is Fivetran certified on SAP? Yep, yep. So Fivetran connects to SAP HANA. Uh, we pull the functional modules out of it. So your, your financials, financial information, your order cash modules, um, we pull that directly from the raw tables itself. Um, that we have a couple of customers that are doing that across that we are working with. Okay. But do you you don't have a native connector which leverages SAP JCO or RFP or any of the native SAP technology where you have us? You don't have a certified uh, adapter or connector, right? So our connectors are certified. We can pull the data across. From there, um, we also have an acquisition we did in September called HVR, where you can do close to real time streaming from all of the other SAP type of modules. I'm happy to discuss with you more. So we've done use cases like SAP ECC and and other other older SAP modules. Um, Fivetrend can also do SAP HANA. Um, we can, I can definitely um, understand more about your requirements, and we can take it forward from there. I would love to discuss, uh, I have worked personally in SAP for several years, mm -hmm. for almost more than two decades. So I want to know what Fivetran has to offer and how we can leverage. Mostly our use cases are where we have to pull data from various SAP versions. Mm -hmm. So 
So that is where I need uh, Fitran and I want to know how all it is done. Because right now we are trying to propose, uh, there is a product in SAP called SLT replication. Uh, yes. You know, server. Yeah. But uh, that is one. Generally, uh, these company, other companies like Hevo Data, C Data, they mm -hmm. have certified adapters and connectors for most of the SAP, uh, right from R2 to R3. Mm -hmm. CC6 to all the way up to S4 HANA. Okay. Yep. So in that connection, I, I need somebody, really, I need to talk to somebody uh, technical who can uh, explain me how it is connected and then, uh, because every now and then we are having these conversations with people mm -hmm. where we are trying to pull data from SAP. Yes. And uh, generally, pure BigQuery approach is, you know, just throw CSVs and, you know, we will do something. That's how the approach works. Yep. We want to see at application level can we connect with us. I see, I see. Yeah, I'm happy to, I think you can reach out to Amrita. Uh, we can have a conversation from there. Definitely we have okay. worked with quite a few um, Indian companies and all across uh, APAC yeah. on, on these type yeah. of, uh, um, you know, you're, you're pretty spot on from, from saying what, what, what we can do, um, comparing us to Hevo and then and the other other players in the market. So happy to... Um, speak on a on a private call or take it offline. Yes, Samita, please. Um, yes. Uh, I would my for my project, you know, actually, I I mean uh, need a CAD analyst for a few days. Means a, a maximum of one week or two, uh, less than that, around that. Okay. And preferably that can be done by any forging company. Means Tata Steel, the, you know, the process called forging. Okay. Thank you. So the heavy forging companies, they'll be means in actualization of my machine, manufacturing. Okay. It'll be very much use, useful to them. So it can be any for Bharat Forge or Tata Steel. Mm -hmm. They will be and hardly I have my concepts ready. I have my prototype ready, and. Uh, uh, we'll have to do small, uh, the final touching, the 10%, 5% remaining component. We have to do, uh, do the analysis where we get the me maximum mechanical advantage. Hi, hi and, Nagarajan, do you, do you mind if we take this conversation offline? We can discuss with you yeah. further uh, um, in, instead of using this forum. Thank you. No worries, no worries. Thanks. Thank you. Perfect. Um, guys, let's reach out Reach out to Amrita. Uh, we will be happy to speak to you one-on-one -on -one to understand whether you know, we will be a good fit or not, and we can take it forward from there. I appreciate everyone's time today for tuning in. Um, yeah, and I um, hope you have managed to learn a lot about what Fivetrend does and also how you, know, you can actually use Sears to do your AI and ML. Sure, sure, yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, you can reach out to my email or my number anytime if anyone has any issues. And uh, I'll I'll reach out to Kalyani and Nagarjun sir uh, offline after this call. Perfect. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. Thank you.